I think I'm loving this conversation today. It's a testament to the industry uh, at large that I'm even able to be here with some artwork, some early integrations of AR tech into my paintings. I'm going to walk you through um, a little bit of the how this technology is changing, how I think about painting. So mixing up reality is what art is all about. We materialize imagination. That's what artists do. And now AR is changing how I do that in a big way in the studio. This is classical AR, AR without any tech, where the visual experience is prompted by the artwork but dependent on the engagement of the imagination of the viewer. As a large scale but static artwork, this painting plays with perceptions of space and pattern and peripheral vision to create a sense of the dynamic. With AR, that dynamic quality can come to life. What enters the eyes as light enters the brain as data, and our vision is only part sensation. The other part is invention. So, Perception is actually a creative act that we tend to take for granted. And an important part of what my work is about is exposing this fact and making it visceral. Pushing the boundaries on the known to expand our reach with creativity is core to what humans do. And there are big cultural changes happening today. And from the other side of these revolutions in computing from XR and, and AI, uh, you know, it looks like we're still in the cave days. I certainly am with my artwork, but even the early integrations are exposing some pretty exciting things. In the future that we now occupy, this document is not easy to read, but it's doing better than this one. And this is important to think about going forward. We've learned a lot about being digital in the last 50 years. And in the process, the value of materiality has begun to look different to us. We often desire experiences over objects, and objects themselves quickly become obsolete. This has got me thinking about how the links we build between the material and the digital with AR can design feedback loops and create a resonance between those two dimensions. As a painter, I'm really interested in the, vis the visceral experience where the physicality of the engagement comes at the core of the experience and the thinking follows. Making this painting was a journey for me. It was a, a literal dance, sometimes slippery. Uh, it was a study of energy collecting and a study of the habits of seeing and mark making. Thinking about this piece now, XR Tech could make this painting responsive to the viewer, emergent from generative code and integrations of biofeedback. This is one of the most interesting ideas that has come about this early integration. The real-time dynamics in a painting like this is created by the act of looking. So that's a fundamental shift. Rather than for the act of looking, you can create it by the act of looking. A hundred years ago, in the artistic movement of the futurist, the cutting edge of art making was wrapped up in projects and to embed drama of motion into painting. Today, through AR, painting as a cinematic space has become functionally real. And we're at a watershed moment in art because of it. AR in art means multi-sensory. And in the case of this piece, which I'll demo in a minute, I've layered Kristen Lian's music into the portrait of her. And that's cool, but for painting to gain a whole new spectrum of sensation is a pretty big deal, actually. AR in art also means painting is no longer just painting. 
It is also a screen. For now, we have to use our screen to access the screen-like functionality, but it's still a very interesting shift for painting itself. Okay. So here's a painting, print of a painting, and what degree would we get some? Come see me at the table so you can s listen to Kristen playing. Be able to embed a time-based animation experience into a painting as a strategy for engagement, for slowing down the viewing, for exposing other aspects of the viewing experience. One of the things that I'm most excited about by pairing audio with a visual experience in this way is the difference between how we tend to look at the world and how we listen. When we're looking, we're constantly shutting down and defining and labeling and categorizing everything that we see, trying to stop the viewing experience based on all our predictive assumptions. But that's great unless we're talking about art, when you want to open up that experience. The track, there it goes. Yay. So, like I said, I gotta, well, you know, Chris says the sound is the problem. <laughs> so these were the issues I was gonna sidestep, but I think the sound is more of an issue. So here's painting getting meta on the idea of TV and painting painting as a screen. And just the beginning of where I see all this going, very excited to take it wherever that is. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan.